Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So CompCom along with the Mod My Classic team has finally released their PSP core for the PlayStation Classic. I've been able to test some games with it and it actually runs really well. So I want to share with you how to get that working on your PlayStation Classic. The first thing you have to do is prep your flash drive. You have to format it into FAT32 and name it Sony. All you have to do is open up your drive in Windows Explorer, right click it, Go to format right here is where you change the file system make sure fat32 is selected if you're using a larger drive i'll have a program in my description on how to format those drives also right here the volume label this is what you have to name sony it's s-o-n-y all capital letters once those are both in place hit the start button right here and your drive will be formatted i've already gone ahead and put my psp games on my drive i keep them on the root you can also put them in a playlist style I'll have my playlist tutorial video in the description as well if you're interested in that. Now that our flash drive is ready, we have to start putting the programs on it. So you will need BleemSync 0.4.1, the boot menu version 0.2 public beta, and then the Mod My Classic Core for PPSSPP for your PlayStation Classic. I'm going to extract all three of these to my desktop. All you have to do is drag and drop the files onto your flash drive. So first start with BleemSync. I'm going to take these files drag them to the flash drive. Okay, those are all moved. Let's move on to our boot menu files. And make sure you do this in the order that I'm showing you here. You have to follow this order to get this to work. So now we're gonna copy our boot menu files and drag those over as well. You'll get a pop-up saying that you have files with the same names. Click replace the files in this destination. Now to move the PPSSPP files over, just take this RetroArch folder and drag it into the flash drive. Once again, you'll pop up asking you to replace files Make sure that you replace any files. So not including these game files, this is what your flash drive should look like when you're finished. If you want to double check that your PSP core is installed, go into RetroArch, Config, RetroArch again, Cores, and you'll see it right here. And all that's left to do is to eject or safely remove the drive, insert it into your PlayStation Classic, and turn it on. So let's move on to the PlayStation Classic now and see how these PSP games run. All right, so here we are in RetroArch. You see that there is an FPS counter in the bottom. Don't listen to that. It is a lie. It is not accurate. So what you need to do is go to Load Core, go to the PPSSPP Libretro.so file and hit X. And in the corner behind the FPS counter, you should see that it says PPSSPP version 1.5.4. That means the core is loaded. Now you have to load your game. Go to load content and you're going to navigate on your memory stick wherever you keep your games. I put mine on the root of the stick so I'm going to go to start directory, this next button, down to media. And if I scroll down you'll see all my games here listed. So let's take a look at a few of them. Let's do a showcase. Let's see how Castlevania works. So hit X, X one more time to select the core again and then we should be in the game. So it says the game has an autosave feature. We're going to hit X to continue. And I think this is all we get for this one. For some reason, um, I couldn't get Castlevania to start. Now, I know it will work. It just takes some tweaks, I think. But this has run. I can run this on the SNES Classic. I'm sure the guys just have to tweak a little bit to get this to work. So if you come into that problem, just hit start and select on your controller. Go down to close content. All right, we're going to try some crash tag team racing. Oh. Sierra did this game, all right. Intro seems to be running pretty good. Radical Games, we're gonna skip to the gameplay. I don't know anything about this game. Oh, we're going through a tutorial though. It seems like the further into this level we get, it runs a little worse. So, yeah, the frame rate's kind of all over the place with this one. Um, it's hard to say. It still seems kind of playable. The audio it definitely has some stutter. So let's move on. How about some Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII? Sounds good, but there's some skipping in the intro movie. Can we skip it? Yeah, it seems like uh, it's having some trouble with the FMVs on this game. I don't know what that is down there. Is that normal? I haven't played much of this game. And also you can't skip this cutscene, it just pauses it, which is kind of irritating because I don't really want to watch it. I want to see the game. While I'm waiting for this cutscene, let me go back into the RetroArch menu and show you one option 
uh, that Swing Flip mentioned that may help improve some things. Uh, if you go down to options and go down a little bit to block transfer GPU, turning that on, he says, can help sometimes. Okay, finally, I mean, not that that wasn't a cool intro, but I just wanted to get to this. All right, so here's the game. Seems to be running pretty good so far. I I just wanted to get around, you know, and swing my sword. I don't see any, any lag or anything. How about an assault twister? There you go, more assault twister. Twisters for everyone. Still not dead after all that, okay. But we resolve the conflict, that's what's important. More cutscenes. Let's move on. Loco Roco. I really like this game. I know it's kind of cutesy and everything, but it's fun. I don't care. All you do is hit the L and R buttons to move the world around you. You hold them down to make your little guy get popped up. You collect things and sing about stuff. This is actually a really fun game, and it's very, uh, you know, not heavy on resources at all, so it runs good. I played a little bit of this, bef you know, when I was testing earlier, and this game ran really good. Graphic-heavy games will give you issues, but, you know, games like this seem to run really well. In this version, you can save, by the way. In the initial version that I tested out, saves weren't working. This is why we let the developers take their time on this stuff. Oh god, what is that? I'm sorry. Alright, so Mega Man powered up. Now, they kind of made Mega Man really cutesy in this one too, but this is a really, really good game. You should play this if you're a fan of Mega Man. We're gonna go old style. There he is. Oh, who do we pick? We have so many. I think I might pick the Cutsman. We'll go with Cutsman. So yeah, this is actually a really, really good remake of the first game. Um, something I liked about this, at least on the other mode, is that uh, the difficulty options actually change different parts of the stage. Instead of just making like the enemy stronger and things like that, it, the stages actually change with more pits or less pits or however you want to do it. But it looks like this game is running really well. I'm not seeing any hiccups at all. There was a little bit of hiccups um, when I first started the game. The intro uh, video was pausing a little bit, but for the actual gameplay, it seems like things are going pretty good. Climbing these ladders like a boss, almost getting getting shot, too. Watch out for the scissors. Here they come, cutsmen and robot frogs. And whatever those sucker things are. Yeah, Mega Man powered up, running really solid. So here's Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Uh, don't get your hopes up. I will, I'll check out Origins too, but I want to look at this one real quick. I haven't tried it with the new build, but I'm not expecting much. This one is a big one. This, this was, yeah, we're still getting some, some funky moves there. This one is hard to run on a lot of systems, actually. So we got some major skipping in this little intro part. Yeah, but we've been seeing that a lot lately. Can we skip this? I think we can. Really want to skip this. There we go. Skipped it. See how this other cutscene runs. The end game using the in-game graphics. Skipping. Still, still got the skips. Oh, we can actually skip this one. Good. Here's the first part of the gameplay. And this happens sometimes. You're gonna get some games that just, with the hardware that the PlayStation Classic has, I don't think any amount of tweaks will get these games running. It's just a hardware limitation more than anything. So we'll keep moving on. How about some Silent Hill Origins? This may run a little bit better, I'm not sure yet. It's still one of those really highly graphical games. It takes a lot of resources to get working. So we're getting some skips, getting some skips. Oh. Oh, you need the stick for this one. All right, so not that you could play this anyway, um, but you can see how well Silent Hill Origins is doing. We can't move because we don't have the analog stick assigned. Uh, I don't have a map for this either, but we don't have the analog stick assigned to any buttons. So 
This this one's a no-go as well. Silent Hill on the PSP, unfortunately, is not doing much for us. All right, some Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. I want to play this game so bad. It looks really fun. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're getting some skips here. Something with the FMVs and this core is just... I don't know. But this looks really cool. I've played the other games in the series, and that map screen just makes me really wish I could play it. Um, but you'll see here... And, some, and it's only for this game. For some reason, these controls are super delayed. I don't know. The other games don't do this. It's very weird to me. But you can see it doesn't play great. As soon as enemies pop up, it's kind of a struggle to do anything. The, the skipping is pretty pretty bad. Um, this is probably a game I want to play more than anything. Uh, from this, this list here. But we're having so many issues. Again, I don't know if anything can be done in the future to optimize the core a little bit better. That would be cool. I understand if not, you know, it's sometimes you just can't do anything with the hardware that you're given. And that could be the case. But this is Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. Not running great. Alright, that thing is gross. Uh, we're going to move on. We already checked out Final Fantasy 4 before and Persona 2. Those both run really good. Uh, last one I have here is Patapon. This actually froze on me initially before this build. I don't think I could get into the game. Maybe we can get past that hurdle. Maybe this is one of those that might need a little more attention to get running. Also a really good game. I'd say it's kind of cutesy. I wouldn't say this is cutesy, actually. I'd say it's, it's got a really cool aesthetic to it, though. It's very tribal. It's a rhythm game. So that... I wonder if that will be an issue as well, this being on an HDTV. Time to sign the Holy Pact. There we go. I think this is where it got stuck for me last time, so... Oh no, that's right, I did these... I, I saw the drum. The pom... pom pom? Alright, and then here's where I had some issues. I think we made it past the spot. I don't remember this last time. We may be okay. I'm hitting some buttons. It made it! That makes me really happy. If you haven't played Patapon, there's three of them, by the way. Um, and they're all really good. It's I can't even explain what kind of game it is. It's a rhythm game, but it's... I don't know. So anyway, you just hit the button to the, the blinking of the screen. There's delay. See that? that I'm hitting it. I don't know if I can show you on the screen. Well, that worked, but I don't think it was correct. But there's lag, so you may have some problems with Patapon. You know, again, not the fault of the emulator. Pretty sure it's not the fault of the game. I think because it's not meant to be played this way, so the latency or, or the lag, you know, the input lag, might be affecting it. Now, you can fake it and not hit it in time with the blinking and still make progress. You just have to know how much latency there is. Like that. I'm actually kind of hitting it on every offbeat. Yeah, so. So if you have really good timing, Then you can make progress. It's not easy though. Get ready for it. We made it! Got a little into that one. So there you go, super easy to play PSP games on your PlayStation Classic. Just follow all those steps I had at the beginning. There may be future updates with this court. If there are, I will let you guys know. But for now, it seems like we have a pretty good catalog of games you can play on this. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm going to have a lot more to show you on hacking stuff with the PlayStation Classic. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.